Welcome to this month in GKE June 2025 edition. We are back once again to update you on the latest and greatest innovations from the GKE team. Autopilot Computer Class in GK Standard is in private preview. Autopilot Computer Class enables users to use Autopilot features inside standard mode without the need to choose between the operating modes. You can now run workloads in Autopilot's secure user space environment with reduced operational overhead and automated capacity provisioning. Flex Start provisioning mode on GKE now supports TPUs in single host node pools. Flex Start is a feature of Dynamic Workload Scheduler that makes accessing highly demanded accelerators like TPU, V5E, V5P, and Trillium easier while optimizing their utilization. Hot off the presses, we just released the GKE MCP server. For those of you who don't know, MCP, Model Context Protocol, allows us to basically plug in tools to the various AI assistants, such as Claude, Cursor, or the newly launched Gemini CLI. Uh, the the G GKE MCP server supports three functions right now, but we'll add a few more tools later. We can easily list all the clusters in your project, get specific information on your clusters, and we even have an API to generate manifests for inference workloads. For example, how do I run Llama on VLLM? And it'll generate you that manifest. Uh, should mention, this also works in conjunction with another open source tool that we have, kubectl AI. So now you can have both GKE and kubectl plugged into your AI assistance. GKE now reports CPU and memory requests and limits metrics for your Kubernetes native sidecar containers, starting from GKE version 132.4 and above. Backup for GKE now supports cross-project backups and restore. This is probably one of the most requested enhancements of the backup feature. It is currently an allow listed GA. So reach out to your Google account team if you'd like to enable it for your projects. C4D virtual machines are now generally available in GKE, starting in version 132 for GKE standard and 133 for GKE autopilot. C4D EMs are powered by the fifth generation AMD Epic Turin processor, and they also have Google's titanium silicon. Custom computer class got some new enhancements. With zonal preferences, you can now specify a zone with reconciliation to preferred zone for each one of your priorities. Placement policy allows you to support compact placement policy, which is important for HPC use cases. The GKE cost optimization dashboard has some new recommendations. It will show you idle, over-provisioned, and under-provisioned resources with their dollar value. The insights are visible directly inside the Google Cloud Console. And finally, also in the realm of costs, GKE cost allocation has recently added support for extended memory. For those of you who don't know, certain VM types allow you to have extra memory. Previously, we did not account for this when allocating cost to specific workloads, and these things showed up as unsupported. We can now allocate that full cost to the proper workload or namespace. This ends this month in GKE. For more GKE news, come back next month for this month in GKE July.